There's less than two hours of hurricane season 2022 left, and thankfully this just was not our year. Yeah, it will, however, go down in, in history as a deadly and catastrophic year for Florida. Chief Meteorologist Margaret Orr takes a look back. Hurricane season 2022 was supposed to be active, but it actually ended up being close to average. And unlike the former seven years, it did not start before the beginning of hurricane season on June 1st. There were only three storms in June and July. No tropical development in August, and that hasn't happened since 1997. You know, we had all of the ingredients for an active season. We had a La Nina, which means little wind shear. We had warmer than average sea surface temperatures, weak trade winds, and an active West African monsoon. So it should have been active, but we had plumes of dust crossing the Atlantic every three to five days, and that dust lasted into August. We also had upper level lows that caused some wind shear and cooler subtropical waters. The dust disappeared as we went into September. Six tropical storms, four became hurricanes, two became major, and the first major hurricane was Fiona. Made landfall southwest Puerto Rico crossed the Mona Passage into the DR where it just wreaked havoc. This system also raced to the north over towards Nova Scotia. Winds were 105 miles per hour. Seas offshore, 98 feet. And then there was Ian. <sighs> Ian was a tropical wave that moved off the coast of Africa into the Caribbean where it developed. Then it headed towards West Cuba where it had rapidly intensified, became a category three hurricane moved into the Gulf of Mexico, rapidly intensified again, making landfall just north of Fort Myers, winds 150 miles per hour. <sighs> that was September 28th. So what is rapid intensification? That's a 35 mile per hour increase in 24 hours. On September 27th, it was a Cat 3, 115 mile per hour winds. September 28th, a Cat 4, 155 miles per hour. That's a 40 mile per hour increase. When a hurricane rapidly intensifies before landfall, it doesn't leave much time for people to respond, especially if the track shifts. Ian's track shifted. September 25th, the track focus was the Big Bend area of Florida. September 26th, the focus still Big Bend, but Fort Myers was on the extreme south side of the cone. Not until September 27th did we see a shift more to the south. Ian was devastating. At least 146 people died in Florida. A 10 to 15 foot storm surge washed away bridges, businesses, homes, and people. Damages estimated at $50 billion. And the season wasn't done with Florida. Along came Hurricane Nicole, first hitting the Bahamas and then near Vero Beach early November 10th. It crossed Florida to the Big Bend area and then dissipated near Atlanta. The problem with Nicole is that it took out what was barely left standing in Florida after Ian. So we end the year with 14 named storms, eight became hurricanes, two major. It's close to an average year. For those impacted, hurricane season 2022 was a terrible year. It's a year the people of Florida will never forget. It'll be remembered the way we will always remember Ida. And I am thankful that we got a much needed break this year. You know, it gives us more time to get our homes and lives in order and prepare for the years ahead. One thing is certain, we're gonna be impacted again. You only have to look back at all of the hurricanes that come, have come our way over the years. I'm glad it's over. Yeah, me too. Thankful too, but definitely thinking about our friends out there in Florida, they were hit so hard, Margaret. They really were, and it's going to take a long time to recover. Um, I was at Lowe's, finally got a new dishwasher. Mm -hmm. Mine was broken after Ida. There were people in there who were buying new appliances, living with their parents because their home still chaos. Yeah. And that's from Ida. From Ida. Yeah, we needed this break this year. We did. Yeah. Like you said earlier. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> so glad it's over. Thank you so much. All right.